awards. So we'll be we'll see like uh, how we can uh, test what what to test and all that. So we'll quickly start. Uh, okay, skipping introductions the second time. Uh, I hope you all remember who we are. <laughs> So what do you expect from this session before we get on slides? What, what about chatbots? How can you automate? Okay. In fact, how we can test those on How we can test those? What sort of tools are there in the market? And cool. I think we are covering all of that. No. We'll talk about all of the kind of testing that we'll do. The translation in the sense the voice to text. Oh okay. I think that is out of scope for a bot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, except, except the translation testing, I think we are talking about most of the things that you have asked for. Uh, maybe we will talk more. So, the agenda covers what, why and how of a conversational AI, uh, the challenges that we see. So, what are the test approaches that we uh, have to take or we will take? So, what are the test types? Uh, we will take a use case, uh, it is a coffee shop bot uh, that we will be talking about. And we will look into automation with Botium. Uh, how many of you know what Botium is? What is what here? Okay. So we'll we'll see what it is. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how we can measure quality with chatbot because this is different and we'll see how different it is. Cool. Uh, yeah. Now the question is back. What is conversational AI? Before that, how many of you have interacted with bots? Any of the bot? Alexa, Siri. Yeah, voice yeah, bots, your, Alexa, Siri, your chat bots. How many of you have interacted to that pop up that comes in? Uh, may I help you? I see that you're trying to do this. How many of you think that is a real person sitting behind? Uh, there are people who think that, but that is not the case, right? So there is a bot. And uh, do you think we need to test it? Do, how many of you? have uh, had the conversation and left it in between and got frustrated and did what you wanted to do and quit it. And how many of you were happy and could actually get what you were looking for from that bot? How many times? What was the success rate? Once in a while. Exactly. So do you think if we are launching something as part of our application, do we need to test it? Do you think we should test that? I think your experience says that, right? That someone must have tested it. How many of them do you, do you think that test them? Actually, they test them. As part of no, the resume all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they let the people test they them. They let the people test them. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, over to you now. So, yeah. Uh, so, conversational AI is anything uh, that is not human, which understands what you are talking about and uh, will give you back something. It can be a positive answer or it can be you know, something that is not true, right? So that also you might get when you talk to bots and uh, you can easily uh, make bots do things. So that, that's the reason why we test them. So that's what conversational uh, AA is all about. So there are uh, so many places in the world where you see these uh, conversational AI with bots, starting from the WhatsApp on our phone to Slack that we use for our team communication to Alexa or Google Home, uh, what they say as the personal assistant at home. So all, all these have uh, conversational AI and uh, you know. Uh, the spy is on you. I'm not <laughs> going there. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So then why do you need to test the chatbot? Simple question. To remove the manual intervention and some yeah. things. Yes. Automation is to remove the manual intervention maybe. But why, why, why do we test them? Why do we need to test? Yeah. Why, why? Do you? It's a customers, right? Are we getting the correct response that is expected out of that conversation, that question that the end user is putting up? At the end of the day, I want something to be done. Is that getting done or not? And in the right way. I will tell you why we are talking about the right way. And you have something? I mean, in chatbots, basically, I got it's meant to face your customers. So, you don't want to lose your business because of a bad Definitely. Amazon Alexa will let you book an Ola and Uber 
but it does lot of crap between that. If you go and try Amazon Alexa, you'll understand what crap it does. Because I've done that and I have seen what. So simply you say Alexa book a number from me to there. It will always consider your home location and it will does all the stuff. It will start doing all the stuff. You don't want to understand where you are. So by default, Amazon thinks that you put your Alexa at a definite place. And that is your home and Alexa is your personal address. So that's what they think. So all these things have to be tested because if I ask a Uber from here to go to airport, it will book a Uber from my home to airport in Hyderabad. So that, that's what it does and that is not what I intended to do. Right? Some classic examples, uh, there is a Microsoft bot called Take. How many of you know this bot? This is an interesting bot. Uh, it used to tweet. So they created this bot to interact with users through tweets. So they kept it in production. So in initial few minutes, few uh, few minutes, it is very nice to the uh, customers who are tweeting back to it and all of that. And somewhere, some conversation started about black and white. Within hours, this bot became a racist. <laughs> it started abusing, you're a Mexican, I won't talk to you. Mexicans are idiots. So that's what, right? So uh, in the entire uh, game of AI, so the thing is that you have to go and learn and improve yourself. But it, it learned and improved itself, but that's not the right way that actually they wanted to do it. So it started abusing people. So actually so. it could not even uh, understand that what it has to learn and what it does not have to learn. Yeah. So if you treat of a toddler, it is just like a toddler that you have left to communicate with the people outside. And when the toddler starts speaking, definitely you will have to teach it and you will have to train it how to behave in public, whom to talk, what and how. Right? And that is what was lacking here and it learned everything that it came across and it starting, started abusing, they had to shut it down within 16 hours of its launch. And this was a teenager bot on Twitter. So they did this three times, but all three times they had to really shut it down. Okay? Our favorite. Cool. Uh, home automation solution. So Alexa has done uh, so many things. A classic one is 2 a.m. it started playing party songs when the mm -hmm. owner is not at home. Mm -hmm. 2 a.m. in the morning, you play songs in US, you understand what happens. You end up, in, you end up going to jail, no matter you do that or you don't do that. So it actually took its owner to jail. Yeah, he paid for going to jail. So, yeah, a weather bot. So, the interesting thing about this weather bot is, so it is designed to give weather details. So, if I uh, want to know the weather details, right? So, if I'm going out, uh, I can ask the bot in n different styles and n different types. I can simply ask, how does the weather look like? And I can, I can ask something interestingly, do I have to carry my umbrella when I go out? Do I have to carry my shares when I go out? And all of that. So it's, it understood most of that, but uh, it failed to understand what a weekend is. And why do you think people use weekend when they are thinking about weather? <laughs> because they do plans, right? They do plan like, this weekend I want to go to Delhi. What is the weather in Delhi this weekend? So it failed to understand that. So that way, you know, this bot has failed. And yeah, the CNN news bot. Uh, so it actually is uh, meant to deliver news. So one uh, subscriber said like, uh, hey, I want to unsubscribe to you. Then it said, yes. And the next day it started sending the sub, you know, messages again. So users do get irritated, right? I wanted to unsubscribe when you sent us. But the next day I see the same message again. So that's what happened with this particular bot. So these are all uh, the regular use cases that have happened. And uh, we are using bots anywhere. The classic example is Wiki. Uh, you get an order and then you say that uh, I really like this order. I didn't find this item in this order and all of that. Someone comes up and says, hey, what is the missing item? So it costs this much. Do you want a replacement or do you want your money back and all of that? Do you think some human behind that is doing all these tasks? No, right? It's a bot. So we are using bots in uh, real time to face the consumers, customers. So we have to be very careful uh, not to do these kind of mistakes again and again. So that's why we have to test bots. We have something? Uh, so all I wanted to add is these were very straightforward examples. So weather bot, it was supposed to give weather, it just could not give the weather. Straightforward example, right? So it is very important for you to test it. These are the major uh, brands in the uh, you know industry and they are representing your brand to the people out there. And as I said, most of the people don't even know that there is this is a bot and this is not a human sitting behind and answering my questions and queries. There might be people who think that this 
this company is shit and I'm sorry to use that word, but and they'll just move ahead, right? So it is very important for you to test what your bot is supposed to do first, right? What it is designed for. So uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges. Now you want to take it or? Good, uh, I'll take it. So self-learning systems, what are self-learning systems? So the best example, right? So I'll talk about, so natural language processing is one of the self-learning systems, but uh, let's get more realistic. So how many of you have found uh, uh, you know, a message on uh, Google Assistant saying that, hey, you want to go home now, this route is busy, take some other route. So how does that know that you are actually going to that route every day? So that learns, right? So that learns that, okay, this particular person is traveling from point A to point B every day. So this particular person might travel from point A to point B today as well, because at this particular time he is at point A. So that, that can be, you know, that, that is what Google has learned. So all these chatbots, in a way that, you know, they have to uh, process the natural language that we uh, talk. As I told you, I can simply ask, what is the weather? I can ask, do I have to carry my umbrella? Do I have to carry my shades? Do I have to carry my raincoat? And different things, right? And they have to understand and they have to be intelligent day by day. So it is very difficult, uh, you know, to test these kind of systems because I give an input and I expect an output. For a simple example, maybe Shama will uh, show it later. Say an echo bot. You just have to tell me whatever I tell. I say hi. You will also in return say hi to me. So the bot will say hi. I tell something else, it will tell something else. Tomorrow someone came, came and uh, improvised it. And they have added some other phrase or something to that. So now, my test output is not as expected. Can I call that as a failure of my test bot? No, right? It is still doing well. It is actually doing more better than what it was doing. But you can't call it as a failure. So it is one uh, tough thing. And maybe the next one is also non-linear non input. So 7.5 trillion human voices and uh, different testing mechanisms. So if you ask me the same words that my friends type in Telugu using English alphabets, I type it, I type it differently. You might also have been doing that. Like if I have to type Kyahu uh, in Hindi, I can type K-A-Y-A and H-U-A. But Shama can just say K-Y and then write it. And others understand that. So we think differently 7.5 billion humans, 7.5 billion voices and 7.5 billion different testing mechanisms and all of that. So with those inf inputs also, my input should still be the same when I am a bot. Uh, Non-deterministic user interactions, uh, as I told you, like there are uh, so many things that I can't determine. I will not always ask you what is the weather. I will ask you 10 different questions, but at the end of the day, my intent is to get the weather. How do you test that? So, there are no barriers for users. So, as users, I'll. How many of you have played with Siri? You, you might have seen videos as well. Hey Siri, what is this? Hey Siri, what is this? And all of that. The good thing about, about Siri at that time, at least when I played, is it won't have the context. But the chatbots needs to have the context. Imagine if I'm asking for an order, if I'm placing an order in a coffee shop, I'll just try like I want these these items, and then uh, I'll say place order. And then I'll realize, oh, I don't want this. Go back and uh, just uh, re redo my previous order. We are humans, right? We tend to do all of these things. So these are all you know, casual business use cases as well if you are building such things. So when you switch those contexts and all of that, you know, your bot is still doing the same fantastic job that it should do. So the most important, uh, the most differential thing about the conversational AI and to the applications that we have is, the applications will have defined the process for completion of any of the tasks. For example, if you want to book a flight, you will go to a site, you will put the source, destination, there are placeholders, where do you need to put it? You click on the calendar, it will give you the uh, calendar, you'll have to choose the date, put the number of uh, people who are traveling, and then uh, say is it a round trip or a one way trip and so on. So you know what to do, how to do, and the application will actually gather all the details it wants from a user. Think of a bot. There is nothing. You are free to do whatever you want, chat whatever you want to chat. You will start with the date, you will tell the source first or destination first. What if the, uh, the bot only understands that the first destination is always, I mean the first place is always the source, the second place is always the destination. 
in uh, you know applications you do not have any errors scenarios here because you know you have to put it in the destination text box and source text box here you're free think about the date the person traveling from us to india and wants to book a flight here he puts in the date in mmdd yyy and think of the people here the bot is designed for the people in india what it will do the reverse so you know it is really very challenging and you have to think of all of these kind of scenarios when you are testing a bot so that is the basic fundamental challenge between testing any conversational ai to that of any of the application maybe they are offering the same thing okay so uh so now think about it that how can i test these kind of uh, things there are so there is a variety right today i am designing some test tomorrow at night might not hold good because my bot learned I don't know if it has learned properly or if it it, it has learned just like you know did it but i have to know and i cannot keep the same test cases for days together and have the same input expect the same output you will get some better output you might get some worse output you have to take a call and you have to test it how do i do that so um you want to take this or so uh, this is a uh, dialog flow uh, chatbot architecture so uh, a sample one Okay, just a sample. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a sample one. So we are trying to get uh, the major blocks. We are not going into uh, deeper details of it, but in general, if you take anything, you might have something very similar to those blocks. And you have a user, so the user will give you input. Uh, it can be something like typing, or it can be something uh, as voice. And that input will go, and uh, it will do a query. So once it does the query, uh, any chatbot application has to understand the intent. so most of i mean almost 99% of the chatbots are defined based on the intent so uh, and then once the it understands the intent it goes and makes a call to its apis and database and all of that so and then it will does all the processing and then it will get back something for you so that something is an actionable data so it will give you that actionable data in uh, again a text format or a voice format so depending on your using alexa or you're using some whatsapp chatbot so then it comes back to the user So it is a very high-level architecture. So today we are not talking about this. Uh, this you can do it in N forms, uh, however you do it. And uh, uh, something we are not talking is uh, not majorly on this. What we are concentrating is on the AI platform. So how it how will it understand the intents and how will it translate into a you know specific thing, and how will it give you back uh, some actionable data? So why are we looking at this in first place, right? So if I ask you as a tester and I say that. this is a xyz application and you have to test it so what are the things that come to your mind what are the questions that you might have for me what will you ask before you proceed the testing or before you strategize your testing for that particular application what is what is the expectation what is the requirement how have you implemented it what are it what is your tech stack how are you actually doing it what are the different components then you will think what you need to test right so we looked at all the things so suppose i know that this is the bot internet to do this particular uh, these these are the capabilities of that bot and it is a conversation okay uh, bots can be of two different types ai or just faqs you can have complex queries and you can just automate those queries and it is just that this is the question these are the set of responses that i have to give okay then there are ai bots which will keep learning machine learning deep learning algorithms are implemented see what it is there then according to that you have to come up with your test strategy right so here i understand all the parts of the application i see that there are some api calls there is some db that is uh, you know my actual application which is uh, which it is pointing to there is this nlp in between where the intent is recognized that what the text is coming there if it is voice i have to also think of is the voice converted into text because that is another challenge the voice the texture the the um, accent may vary you have to test that and here we are completely dependent on the third party tools that are there to convert from speech to text so is it in my scope if you are developing it it is in your scope else it is not in your scope now in this talk today we will be only concentrating on the conversation part okay all apart from this your performance testing your security testing your api testing integration testing everything still remains the same which you have to do don't think that if we have not covered that that is that does mean that it does not have that right and moving on 
Uh, as we said, we are just going to take a, a sample coffee shop bot. Why? Because we all understand uh, going to a coffee shop and ordering drinks. It is as simple as that. Order a drink or reorder things, delivery or pickup and do the payment. Simple task to do. Okay. Uh, so what are the test approaches? So the first thing is that definitely I will have to think of manual testing and have to design test cases. What I will test as part of this application. I'll come up with that set of tests that I'm going to do. Perform manual testing. Um, now, if I have to just say hi, hello to the board and order, right? There are like, even if I ask you, like we are not even 50 in the room. If I ask you, you all, I'm sure all 50 of you will come with your own flow, right? And think of it, me doing manual for every release. I cannot do that. Sure, definitely, right? So I now want to think of automation. So the next step is definitely I want to automate it. Automate it and put it on, a, on my CI CD pipeline so that it automatically checks it and tell, gives me the feedback. I don't want to wait for it. Then next is exposing it for the crowd. Why do I do this? This is very important step for any of the conversation AI because me as a tester or my team as a testing team, we are a bunch of people who can only come up with a bunch of phrases or a bunch of styles. Okay, so what if I choose people in such a way that they come from different backgrounds, different age groups and uh, different uh, languages or regions so that I can get more and more phrases and texting styles. If you see, I don't think no two people uh, text the same way. If you text me, I may be recognize that who is texting this. Is it you or not? Maybe because I'm familiar with your texting style. You getting that? And do you believe in this or no? Do you agree to this? So uh, that becomes very important. And if you talk about teams, I don't understand at least them. Uh, I really cannot have a conversation with them. So I forget about the bots, right? So you have to really capture all this data. Take the data. Train your bot so that it can capture more and more phrases. It can actually, you know, get better and better along the time. So you can capture the training data. So this is very important uh, step as part of your test approach. Now, uh, as part of manual testing, what exactly are you going to test? We we spoke about a lot of challenges and everything. What exactly are you going to test? So the first thing that I'm going to test is a personality. Okay, so. Why personality testing is that important? So when we began uh, speaking about the conversation AI, we said that we are trying to give a human touch conversation, right? To any of the conversations that we are having with the bot. If I ask you and say that you have to talk to a robot and get your task done, how many of you are comfortable doing that? You want to do a banking transaction, think of it. And I'll tell you this is a bot. This is going to help you. Will you trust it? Why won't you trust it? Would you like to go with your bot or would you like to go to the bank, talk to your personal assistant there or the manager there and get a task done? What is the preferable thing? So that human touch is very important, right? The moment you feel this is something bot which may go any other way, you don't trust it, that is gone. You have lost the game. So the first thing is that uh, it has to have a human touch. So think of this always in your mind when you're testing any of the conversation AI, right? Now, when you go and meet a person, the first thing what you will do, you will greet, you will introduce yourself. I'm so and so, I do so and so, right? I think we did that in when we began our talk as well. That is an eye breaker. So that is what you will do, right? So your bot is also supposed to do that. Meet, greet, and that should have a name. If I say Siri, what comes to your mind? If I say Alexa, what comes to your mind? Why? Think of it not having a name. What you would call it as? Auto um, Alexa Home Assistant? Would that sound good? What if I say Alexa? You definitely know what Alexa is, who Alexa is, right? So it should have a name. It should meet and greet you and it should also tell you what it is capable of doing so that it can directly minimize all the risks and all the error prone flows that are going to come its way. What if uh, I go and ask about whether to a bot which is selling policies to me? How does that matter? I'm asking I want to plan a weekend to Goa, what do I do? It's like, I don't understand what you're saying because it is not designed to do that. So better tell what you're designed to do. Okay, so the user knows, okay, I can only do this with this bot. So that is the first thing. Onboarding is, 
you will have to engage with the small dogs you cannot just go and say give me tickets it will give you tickets and you go home yes there are people like that but there are also people who are more talkative they talk they love to talk that person is asking me to show show up the menu so how can i do that i'll have to have all the possible ways of asking the same thing and have to test because i cannot say and i cannot ask the user to only put the question in this fashion the user is free to remember next is your error management suppose it does not understand something how is it handling it okay to the banking application assistant i just go and ask uh, um, i want to have a coffee so it definitely does not understand that so how gracefully it is handling that situation what if it says sorry i don't understand come come again or can you please repeat i'm afraid i did not understand any of this beautiful phrases right what if it continuously keeps on uh, saying the same thing and it does not change it at all you will leave it right you will not continue with it what if it says that uh, i am sorry as of now i can only do these things for you i can help you with uh, maybe looking at the policies or buying the policies so you know that okay i cannot continue this conversation all i have to talk about is this okay so how gracefully are you handling these scenarios is what the test cases you have to design again for if it is not there make sure that intents and those uh, they are they call it as default fallbacks there are there in place okay you give the options to the users rather than um, letting the user ask you any questions minimize by giving them options i can do number 1 number 2 number 3 for you what do you want me to do or if it is giving you the date in the wrong uh, order confirm things that uh, you have been asking for the tickets from this test uh, source to this destination on this day is that correct or say that okay i don't understand uh, for example if i just write some short forms and it don't understand and it is asking you for the date next time don't again ask for again please give me the date ask can you give me the date in ddmmy format so it the user knows okay i have to enter in this fashion okay you are minimizing the risks next is speed and accuracy so when you're trying to find uh, some uh, uh, you know information on the web it will at least give you the loader right it will say okay i'm looking for you and it gives you the loader and you know that way but in the conversation it is just looking at at the back end databases and trying to fetch the data how do you know what it is doing or uh, on the applications if you get error at least it shows up the error here do you know no so it's better that do you uh, if you are taking time take a little uh, you know uh, do that little small talk or tell that i'm looking for you just hang in there okay just don't wait forever otherwise the user will go and accuracy is very important whatever i'm asking for please give me that don't give me some other information like just now nal gave an example if i say book me a uber it should ask me for the source or destination without any assumptions or at least confirm things that i am doing this do you want me to do uh, continue this or not rather than just assuming things and booking some other you know um, source and destination for you navigation this is again very important in the applications i can go back to the page by clicking on the back button how do you do here i'll just change the questions but if i change the questions uh i had asked the question previously or i had given the details already i said i want to place uh, order for uh, cappuccino okay uh, and in between i'm just saying uh, show me the menu does it remember that i ordered for cappuccino or it shows the menu and it is like quite again so these are the kind of tests that you'll have to design switching back to the context and um, if i'm talking about some drugs right and i talk about selenium it should not say automation tool it should remain in that context and selenium is a chemical for it just an example okay so you have to think of all of these kind of test cases and come up with these phrases and the flows okay then once you are done with all of this now uh, you are ready with your test cases and this uh, set of uh, data that you want to test it against now the next step comes the automation i think the people were waiting for this right so um here i'm going to talk about botium so botium is an open source tool okay uh, it is js based and uh, it runs on node 
it has CLI, the command line. Uh, I prefer command line, but it also has a beautiful UI now. It is called as Botium Box, wherein you can configure your bots. You can also have a conversation and save that conversation as one of the test cases and keep on adding phrases to it and create your test sets. Uh, over the period of time, you can go on uh, doing that so that you can run it against all the builds that you have. Botium also has an enterprise edition when you know, get a lot of additional uh, you know, agents to run it, parallel and so on. But other than that, you can still achieve everything and pretty much everything that you want to do, automate and put it on your CI CD cycle. So in today's uh, setup, what I've done is I've just created a small coffee shop board where it uh, just understand. There are a lot of uh, you know um, issues on that, but all we wanted to do is we wanted to see how uh, we can strategize things and how we can automate things. A simple flow we will take. Okay, I have created a flow and also we will do some flows and see. Okay, uh, here um, Botium has a lot of connectors to all the kinds of frameworks that you have in the market. The frameworks, uh, uh, you know, uh, very popular are IBM Watson, if you must have heard about it. Uh, it is uh, API.ai, which is a dialogue flow, which is with Google now. Microsoft Bot, the T Walla Bot, right? Um, and still there are a lot of things uh, in the market that um, uh, are used as the uh, chatbot technologies behind the scene. And Botium has connections to all of them. So the just like your so yeah. Does it work with WordPress? It is also yes, yes, it is there. WordPress is also there. Um, and uh, are you saying what? Yeah. So um, today we will be to, uh, taking a agent which is a dialogue flow agent. You have to just have your Google account. There are pre-built agents as well. You can just use one of them, and you can set up. Uh, so I have. Uh, I have a setup document as well, uh, which I can just show. Uh, the prerequisite is just to uh, have Node installed. The first thing is Node installed, and then the npm uh, package manager, and then the Botium. So it is simple npm install Botium. Once you do that, uh, you can install Botium box. Okay, and you can just put this command. Um, I'll be sharing this document with you. So if you want to go back home and try this out, you can do. There are also sample bots available as part of this uh, Botium box. If you want to play with it and try to explore this, you can do that as well. Okay. So what I'll do, I have already, you know, uh, my uh, Botium box up and running on the local host. I have not hosted it anywhere. And also my Dialogflow agent is up. Okay. So this is my bot. Uh, sorry. Yeah. This is my coffee shop bot which is actually having only these many intents. It is hardly having not more than four to five intents. But think of, about this, having all the phrases and having all the categories that we just discussed about. It will easily take you nowhere straightforward test cases also if you write. It will take you more than thousand test cases to write and thousand straightforward phrases to take, right? So I have not captured all of them. I have captured very few. So uh, intent is uh, any of the action that you want to um, uh, take right and these are the kind of you know uh, phrases that i have collected uh, over the period of time you can go in the training session and you can you can go on um, adding all these phrases to your uh, bot so uh, whenever i do a crowd testing or if i want to improvise my bot in the training session you can just go on put the phrases it will collect that and from the next time it will use those phrases in the uh, conversation that it is having so it will keep on improvising and there is a classic example that we are we have a project in Hyderabad which is actually facing this issue that uh, every time they release, they have uh, they, the, the tests that they have all fail and uh, they have to rewrite the test cases is what they are facing. So we are trying to solve that problem and also make it as part of the CI CD because the developers are doing that job and that bot is the only interface as of now for them to get into the application and that is the major functionality of that application and that is customer facing. So it is very, very, very important one. Right, the same thing behind uh, the scenes. This is what it will have, right? So I have set it up, and now what I want to do is I want to connect this bot, and I want to start having the conversation, okay? And then I want to automate all the conversation that I have. So as part of this, what I need to do is once I have my bot up and running, I need to go and create a service account, and give that the admin right so that I can connect it from the outside, 
and I can do the deployment anywhere I want to deploy. I can deploy it on any of the messaging platforms. I can integrate it with my web application, right? So to connect to that, uh, what I need to do is I will go here, go to the settings. Uh, yeah. It got stuck or what? So, oh, okay. So I'll go to the settings. Okay. This is the project ID. I go here. You can just Google also and get all this information, but. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, then once you go on the project name, you'll have to go uh, here and see the sorry, service accounts. Okay, go to the service accounts and just create a service account here. Okay, just create a service account. Give the name, and once you create that, I'll just create some X Y Z. Okay. So create and select a role. Here you'll have to go to dialog flow and give the API admin. This is a prerequisite. Okay, continue. Creating a key. Now this is the key that you will carry to uh, actually connect to your board. Say JSON, say create, it will actually download this file. Have this file. Uh, as part of Botium box, you don't have to really do much. Have only this file. Okay. I'll say yes. And then uh, this is what it will give you. It will have the project ID, the e uh, client email, the secret key and uh, the token URI and so on. Go to your Botium box once you, you know, uh, run it on your... Uh, run it on your local machine go to chatbots and say register a new chatbot i would say uh, GGN 2019 and then i can just say sample here is what uh, you were asking me about the bot press right so you have bot press here as well so you might, uh, with respect of bot spread, you might uh, have to give some different capabilities. But as so, every connector would have its own uh, capabilities, right? If you understand capabilities in Selenium and APM, that is the capabilities here as well. Okay, and uh, uh, they will actually specify here what they are looking for. And if you want to look for uh, what bot framework or technology wants what um, setup, this is where you can go and have a look at it okay these are all connectors as of now available so i am looking for dialog flow it will tell you for dialog flow what exactly i'm looking for these are the capabilities and this is where you get it so right now i just picked all the json right in that json i have all these capabilities all i need to do is come here and uh, pick what uh, technology chatbot technology i'm using and drop in the file there it is as simple as that Okay, right. So this bottom box is going to help you to do everything on a click and you don't need to do this uh, as part of your setup and you're done with your bot setup. It's as simple as that. Okay, so that is the reason you're using this. So once your bot is set up, I might want to start having the conversation now. Okay, if you don't do this also, the, if you see this echo bot and I'm bot you, these are available as part of the Botium box. If you want to explore, you can go and explore with this. Okay. So I have just set up this. What I'll do is I will say live chat and I'll say connect. Connected. So I'll say hi. That is the response. Uh, just a second. You see that? Not really? Now, right? 
So this is the conversation. I mean, I can have all the conversation. I'll say, how are you? Uh, okay. So I can have all the conversation that I wanted to have, the manual testing that I said. Suppose you're doing manual testing here. What you can do is you can just save it as a test case. Okay, here. You can just say, I want to save this entire uh, conversation as a test case and you can save it there. Okay, this will go and add it in your test sets. What is your test set? Your test cases. That will just have a conversation. So how a typical conversation will look like is you have all your uh, test sets here available, whatever you have created in date. So, so for example, I say that uh, this is my test set and uh, I had created this already. The local repository. Again, you can have all your conversations in your Git and you can pull it in here as well. Okay. So that is the remote repositories. You have the local repository. Uh, what I'll do, I will say, okay, this is my conversation. And you will see that uh, there is something called as hashtag and then me and then hashtag and bot. So what you need to do is the conversation hashtag me is the user input. Hashtag bot is the bot response that you're getting. Okay. So this is a simple thing. You can have this conversation, keep it as a test set and start running the tests. That is simple, straightforward thing. Now think of this. Uh, the user may say hi, the user may say hello, the user may say hola, hey, whatever, right? So I have phrases, utterances, we just spoke about. I have a lot of utterances. I want to test my bot against all the utterances. How do I do that with Botium? What I'll do, I'll create an utterances file. I'll name it hello utterances and I will list down all the utterances there. Everything that I can think of with respect to say hi. Okay. And now here in me section, I'll just give the name of the utterances file. That's it. What Botium will do for you is it will pick each of the utterances and test your bot. It is just like a parameterization. Data driven. Can you relate that now? It is as simple as that. Okay. Uh, I hope this is uh, helpful for you to understand how you can uh, proceed with a uh, bot testing and automation. Once you do all of this, once you capture all of these information, all you can do is go to your test projects. You want to now run it, right? You want to run and see the results, what happened. Now what I do, I will say, okay, register a new test project. I will say uh, coffee shop one. Next, test sets. I will pick the name name of the test set that I have already created. I have written all the utterances and everything. I'll say next. I'll say start. Okay, so why is it not maximizing? Okay. It started running the test cases. You see that? So utterances here. So it will also give you the sample output. See, hi. The second time it took hello. The third time it took hey. Are you getting that? It will start running all the test cases against all the utterances that you have written and it will validate it. I have just also kept certain failures to see how does it show up the failures on the dashboard. So there are these test cases which failed. It says okay everything was fine but instead of uh, I, uh, the user says bye and I had expected till next time. And what the bot says it says bye bye. Previously, it was actually saving, saying bye-bye. I had kept it and it, I changed it purposely. I know that randomly it will pick and it will learn, right? What about this? See, I say sorry. Uh, I was expecting it's okay. No worries. It says it's cool. So every time it will give you some different phrases, right? Now, in this case, how can I automate this? I can pick up all these phrases, put it in Artemis file. And in the response in the board, I can just say that instead of using this particular response, use this utterances. So what it will do with the response, whatever the board gives, it will check in that utterances file. Any of the utterances available, it will pass the test case because that is what it is. So that is how you will actually automate your tests. And then you can also put uh, the plugin here in the settings. If you go, you can uh, actually integrate it with your uh, CI CD and build it. And it will also show up on your dashboard, on your Jenkins or whatever pipeline that you have. It is as simple as that. I, I hope it was simple enough to understand. Yeah. So, uh, you were expecting something else. So, 
Yes, so if you see, I'll show you the test set. So as I said, your test set is nothing but your test case, right? And what is the test set I used there was this test set, okay? And if you go here, these are the different test cases. I have two utterances file. One is for hello and one is for thank you. So there are different ways of saying thank you. I have captured it here. What are different ways? I have just kept two phrases here. And uh, as part of hello, I have kept hi, hello and hey, three utterances. And in my test script, what I say, there is no scripting language or anything, okay? It is simple flow. So what I say, me, and I'm using hello utterance. What does it say? It says that go to the utterances file, hello utterances, pick each and every utterances and check what my bot says. What my bot should say? This. If my bot has multiple different, uh, uh, you know, phrases to respond to, I will create utterances file for that as well and use the name of the utterance file here instead of this static response. But in my case, I have only one response. I've kept one. Next is, I say thank you. And what I'm doing, I'm saying use the utterances from the thank you utterance file and not the static ones. The same way the test case that I was failing for was sorry. I have kept it, it's okay, no worries. But it is saying uh, it's cool or something like that, right? It is giving some different uh, response. So what I'll do is I'll create another utterances file and I'll keep on adding my test data. Tomorrow, suppose your bot is learning and you have trained your bot and you have a lot of more phrases also that it has learned over the time. What you can do, you can keep on adding your training data wherever you're adding, add it to your test cases, your, to the utterances file, that's simple, and run your uh, tests. How do you get to know that there is a new response, like, you know, is hmm? it the correct one or not? I mean, you go to developer... Uh, and... Yes, so that is another thing that you can capture, uh, that is uh, intent resolution. So, for example, I, my intent is to ask for tickets, but uh, it is giving some response, but it is not with respect to tickets, but it is giving me response with respect to, say, hotels. Okay, something went wrong and it is giving me response to the hotel searches. Now, how do I know that? So, in the assertions here, the I have put the conversations here, right? I have just put the plain text. What I can also mention is, uh, this is the intent, it should match to. I will put the name of the intent. Okay, and... I'll put the uh, threshold as well there. So most of the time, this intent should be matched with this much of threshold. If it is falling apart from that, then my test case fails. What I'm trying to do here is, it is matching to the intent that I want it to match. That means it is responding correctly, accurately. It's not just responding something. Does that answer your question? But let's say, uh, you know, it's an e-commerce application, you order something, mm -hmm. you go to Mm -hmm. So if you get me the transaction ID of the latest most order, how do you test this scenario? I mean, can you integrate it with some API or something like that? Yes. You, uh, latest, so what you have to do is, a little coding might be required. Uh, you can use Botium CLI where the Node.js things, you can put your JS code. What you need to do, uh, fetch the order ID, the latest order ID as part of your application, the way it fetches, and then, uh, in the conversation here, you can put dollar order ID and then actually that order ID would be read from the latest thing that you want to match it to. It is just like your assertion. You can put it there. You can put, uh, you can write those files. I am showing this from uh, the, uh, you know, UI so it is not actually, uh, you can actually write the uh, assertions and everything using Jasmine, Mocha and everything that is there. You can just put assertion there. You say bot says, user says. So the way it is me and bot, right? So there the APIs are bot says and user says. Bot says put the order ID and put the assertion. It will actually pick the order ID that you want to look for. That can be done. Uh, how to test like things like uh, where uh, like people are sarcastic? So people are? It's like sarcastic way, like giving like you say, like what type of service you are giving. I'll yeah, so see, that yeah, so again, your bot has been designed to give responses to those, right? Either it is not designed, that in that time, uh, it actually goes to your <coughs> default fallback. In the default fallback, it will say, I don't understand, I can just help you with this. So whatever is designed, you will test. Or if it does understand and it also gives you back sarcastically, that, that also is there, right? You can see some of the bots, they will sarcastically 
assertion would be tricky in that case, right? If we are not sure how uh, the bot will respond. Uh, no, you, okay. 